Welcome to Cinematic Excrement and my ongoing quest to torture myself by reviewing every movie that has won the Razzie for Worst Picture. We are now at the start of the new millennium, which seems like... God, I don't even know how long ago that was. With the apocalypse continuing to rage on, the days and weeks and months and years, they all kind of just run together, don't they? That's probably why I thought Fellowship of the Ring was released in the year 2000. Anyway, today we are looking at the infamous Freddy Got Fingered, made by the equally infamous Tom Green. And what can I say about Tom Green that hasn't already been said? He's a polarizing figure in the world of comedy if ever there was one. Some find him funny, others find him annoying. Some call him groundbreaking, others call him juvenile. Some think he's weird. Actually, everyone thinks he's weird. But whether you love him or hate him, he's certainly one of a kind. Or he was until Jackass came along. Green first rose to prominence as a shock comic with The Tom Green Show, which started on Canadian Public Access TV and was eventually picked up by MTV in the late 90s. This was back when the M in MTV still stood for music. Granted, they had drastically cut down on music videos by this point, so it didn't mean a whole lot, but still. The show was largely known for segments where Green would perform crazy stunts in public, often humoring, irritating, and or disgusting those around him. I remember finding him hilarious at the time, and after re-watching some of these sketches on YouTube, I honestly still get a kick out of them. There aren't many people who could have done what he did, mainly because most of us have shame. Green does not. He would do anything without one iota of embarrassment. He would also torment the hell out of his parents at every available opportunity. Another part of his shtick that clearly inspired Jackass. And I would have felt really bad for Mr. and Mrs. Green if I wasn't convinced they were in on the joke. I don't think they've ever publicly admitted to being in on it, but I am sticking with this theory because if they weren't, I'm pretty sure they would have disowned him years ago. I can't say I was a huge fan of the one-hour special, The Tom Green Subway Monkey Hour, which saw him take his antics to Japan. It just wasn't as funny. The one moment that really stands out in my memory is when Green, for God only knows what reason, decided it would be funny to trap a monkey in his rental van for several hours. I mean, look at this. It's the middle of the day when they catch it, and the sun has gone down by the time they finally let the poor thing go. Annoying the shit out of random people is one thing. Tormenting small defenseless animals is something else. It's not funny, you're just being a dick. That monkey got its sweet revenge, though, by shitting all over the inside of that van. Well done, monkey. That'll teach him. Anyway, despite the Tom Green show being inherently very juvenile, there were moments where it could actually be rather poignant. In the year 2000, the show went on hiatus when Green was diagnosed with testicular cancer. This ultimately led to the Tom Green Cancer Special, a one-hour episode of the show where Green very openly discussed his cancer diagnosis and subsequent treatment. It was the kind of open and honest discussion that could only come from a man like Green who, as previously stated, has no shame. The juvenile sense of humor was definitely still there, as evidenced by the very silly but also educational song he wrote about self-examination. But the special also showed a much more vulnerable side of Green that we hadn't seen before, and it was pretty awesome of him to open up like that. Green mentioned in an interview that he had fallen into a depression after his diagnosis and basically made the special as a coping mechanism, which makes sense to me. There is a reason why they say laughter is the best medicine. Sometimes when you're faced with a potentially life-changing event like that, it really helps to find a way to laugh at it. And what really surprised Green was the fans' reaction to the special. We were just trying to make a fucking weird TV show, and all of a sudden, people were coming up to us with somber and teary, thankful, handshaking sort of things. And we started to realize that maybe this was actually good, what we were doing. If you haven't seen the cancer special, it's available on YouTube, and I highly recommend checking it out. But I should warn you, it does contain some graphic footage of his lymph node removal surgery. So if you're squeamish, be prepared to look away when they get to that part. The point I'm trying to get at here is treatment of Japanese monkeys notwithstanding, I do actually like Tom Green. He's funny, he's creative, he's a pioneer. I am in awe at the things he is willing to do to himself on camera just to get a laugh. I wish I had that kind of courage. You can call me a Tom Green fan. And that is why it pains me to say that Freddy Got Fingered is one of the worst goddamn movies I have ever seen.
Shout out in 2001, Freddy Got Fingered was directed by, co-written by, and stars Tom Green as a guy named Gordy, along with Rip Torn as his father Jim, Julie Haggerty as his mother Julie, ran out of name ideas already, huh? And Eddie K. Thomas as his brother Freddy. Eddie and Freddy, well, at least they added a letter. If you have never seen the movie, you probably assumed Green was playing the title character. Oh no, it's the guy from American Pie even though the movie is not about him at all. I assure you this will eventually make sense if you have enough whiskey. I suggest you start now. I have. The movie introduces us to Gordy, a 28-year-old man, as the movie constantly reminds us. I'm a 28-year-old man. You're a 28-year-old man. I'm 28 years old. He's 28 years old. By having him skateboard through a crowded shopping mall, stealing someone's drink, leading a chase with security that causes an elderly man to get knocked over, damaging a fair amount of property, and then running face first into a glass door. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, Gordy has big dreams of becoming a world-famous animator and is about to journey down to Hollywood to seek fame and fortune. And apparently his family is so glad to be rid of him that they actually bought him a car so he could drive the hell out of town, even though he was perfectly willing to take the bus. And they already paid for his bus ticket. Doesn't make sense yet? Well, keep at it. Ah. <sighs> Actually, I lied. It's never gonna make sense, but at least you'll be relaxed. Get the f*** out of the way! Far more relaxed than Gord. Right off the bat, there's a huge problem with this movie. Its main character. He is a huge asshole with no regard for anyone but himself. As soon as he gets to Hollywood, he starts his new job at a cheese sandwich factory, and it only takes him about five minutes before he starts tormenting his co-workers. Somehow, this does not lead to him getting fired. He also barges into an animation studio, lies his way into the CEO's office, and convinces his secretary, played by Tom's wife at the time, Drew Barrymore, to get him a meeting with the CEO by claiming his wife just died. And he somehow transitions from that into asking her out. That goes about as well as you would expect. What the hell would... Anyway, I kinda get what they're trying to do here. Tom Green made a career out of doing stupid shit in public, and the movie is clearly trying to capitalize on that. Here's the problem. He's playing a completely different character here. Gord has nothing to do with Green's TV persona. Also, the entire point of Green doing stupid shit in public was to watch how other people reacted to it. That was what made it funny. But that's not what happens in the movie. None of this is real. There are no unsuspecting bystanders. All of these events are scripted and everyone involved is an actor playing a part. So basically, they took the Tom Green show and removed the source of the humor. And all that's left is a grown man acting like a jackass. And to further contrast Freddy Got Fingered with the Tom Green show, most of Gort's antics in the movie are just nasty and mean-spirited. And that's not really what Green's TV persona was about. Except maybe for the pranks he pulled on his parents, but again, and I'm pretty sure they were in on it. Green's antics would often annoy the hell out of people, sure, but his goal was never to hurt anyone. The point was for Green to make an ass out of himself in public and watch how people reacted. Gord, however, is a total sociopath and will not hesitate to hurt those around him. For example, you want to know where the title Freddy Got Fingered comes from? At some point in the movie, Gord and his parents attend a group therapy session. Gord and his father really do not get along, so Gord decides this is a great time to lie to the therapist and claim his father has been molesting his brother Freddy. And then he smashes a window for no reason. This leads to Freddy being taken away against his will to a group home for abused children. Despite the fact that he's obviously 25 and, unlike Gord, doesn't even live at home anymore. This is how the movie gets its title. From a terrible joke a little after the halfway point of the movie that has nothing to do with the plot. Is this really the best title Green could come up with? I'm from Canada, so I'm not really very smart. They might as well have just called the movie Daddy Would You Like Some Sausage. That wouldn't have made sense either, as it's also based on a throwaway joke that has nothing to do with the plot, but at least it's not about child molestation, and it's actually a memorable scene from the film. The only memorable scene, really. 
Daddy, would you like some sausage? Daddy, would you like some sausages? Anyway, getting back to the story, Gordy barges in on the Animation Studio CEO while he's having lunch. And no, I don't know where he got the British police costume or why he's wearing it in Los Angeles. I'm not really a cop. Yeah, I think he figured that out. The CEO actually does try to give Gort some advice so he'll leave him the fuck alone and tells him that while his animal drawings are good, they don't make any sense. And to come up with better characters, he needs to get inside the animals. Because Gort is an idiot, he takes this literally and when he comes across some roadkill, climbs inside the animal carcass. And then he gets hit by a truck. Oh well, I guess that's it. Movie over. Good night, everybody. And this is the overused joke where I walk off camera pretending the movie is over, and then I walk back into frame looking dejected because of course it's not over. Why would it be over? This movie ending after less than 20 minutes would be a blessing. And clearly blessings are not for people like me. Hashtag cursed. Despite taking that truck right in the face, Gord is totally fine. Not a scratch on him. Now you might be thinking, oh, this movie uses cartoon logic like Home Alone. Oh no, it's just this one scene. Any other time in the movie when someone gets hurt, they really get hurt. Like when Gord's friend breaks his leg on their skate ramp. Or when the kid who lives across the street trips and falls face first into Gord's car. In fact, that kid gets bloodied a lot. I couldn't tell you why. There's no actual joke here. In fact, there's very little in the way of actual jokes in the entire movie. It's just Gord doing stupid shit and people getting hurt. In fact, in the original cut of the film that they used in early test screenings, the kid died at the end of the movie. Because nothing says comedy like senselessly killing children. <laughs> oh, by the way, they did actually keep that scene in the movie, but they overdubbed it with the kid saying, Daddy, I'm okay. Now. How he can be okay after he just ran into a propeller and lost enough blood to drown a yak? I have no idea, but somehow, he's okay. It's a Christmas miracle! Anyway, because he can't work full-time on his cartoons if he's also working at a sandwich factory, Gord quits his job and moves back in with his parents. And I'd like very much to tell you about the rest of the plot, but, well, here's the thing. There is almost no plot to speak of for the rest of the movie. Freddy Got Fingered is about an hour and a half, and it has maybe 20 minutes worth of plot if I'm being generous. And the amazing thing is, the original cut that they used at test screenings was half an hour longer, if you can believe it. This is the trimmed down version, and it still sucks. Oddly enough, there's a brief shot near the end of the film where someone holds up a sign that says, When the fuck is this movie going to end? I'm sure they meant that as a joke, but that's probably what most of the audience was thinking by that point. In lieu of plot, we just have Gordy running around doing a lot of stupid and disgusting shit, like wearing scuba gear in the shower, wearing a suit backwards, and helping a woman give birth and then swinging the baby around by the umbilical cord. And that's not even the most disgusting thing he does in the movie. I wish I was kidding. He also spends a lot of time torturing his father. The movie's big climax involves him paying a construction crew to transport part of his parents' house with daddy inside and tranquilized to Pakistan. Why Pakistan? Well... If this were Pakistan, you would have been sewing soccer balls when you were four years old. Yep, that's it. Gordy's dad says some weird-ass line about Pakistan that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, even in the context of this movie, and this is the payoff. To be fair... To be fair... To be fair... To be fair... At least that joke had a setup and a payoff. I will take the wins where I can get them at this point. And in the midst of all that nonsense, he also starts a relationship with a woman named Betty, played by the girl from Super Troopers, which actually premiered at Sundance that same year. So she starred in one of the best and worst comedies of 2001. How's that for whiplash? And Betty just happens to be in a wheelchair, and she gets off by having Gordy beat the crap out of her paralyzed legs. Well... We all have our kinks. At least hers doesn't involve dryer lint. Eventually, Gord actually comes up with a cartoon to sell to the animation studio and makes peace with his father. His mother leaves his father for Shaq, just go with it. Freddy is still in the children's home, and they all live something ever after. And that's Freddy Got Fingered. It's as bad as you've heard. 
It's not funny, it makes no sense, it's mean-spirited, it has virtually no plot or jokes to speak of, and it's not funny. I realize I already said it's not funny, but it was such an important point I thought it was worth saying twice. And it's such a disappointment because I know Tom Green can be funny. I've seen him do it, but it's like something just sucked all of the funny out of him. The movie only made about $14 million at the box office, roughly the same as its production budget, but according to Green, it did eventually turn a profit thanks to another $30 million in DVD sales. He also once said in an interview that he does not believe the ticket sales are an accurate reflection of attendance, as he suspects many people under 17 bought tickets to Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles and then snuck into Freddy Got Fingered. The problem with that theory is not many people bought tickets to see Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles either. Of course, Tom was probably joking. God, I hope he was joking. The movie was panned by nearly every critic that had the misfortune to see it, and it took home five Golden Raspberry Awards out of eight nominations. Worst Actor for Tom Green, Worst Director for Tom Green, Worst Screenplay for Tom Green and Derek Harvey, Worst Screen Couple for Tom Green and any animal he abuses, and of course, Worst Picture. Now, most people in Hollywood who win a Razzie tend to ignore them or maybe get a little chuckle out of it and move on. But again, Tom Green is a man without shame. So of course he showed up in person to accept his awards. He even brought his own red carpet, which looked like it cost about as much as a Razzie trophy. During his acceptance speech, he stated, I'd like to just say to all the other nominees in the audience, I don't think that I deserve it any more than the rest of you. I'd like to say that. I don't think that it would be true though. He then proceeded to play the harmonica for an absurdly long amount of time before he was finally dragged off stage. And I would love to show you video of that event, but sadly, I cannot find it anywhere. I'm not even sure if a video of Tom Green's acceptance speech from the Razzies that year even exists. But if it does, and that video is in the possession of someone at the Golden Raspberry Foundation, whether it is some lowly schmuck who plunked down his 20 bucks or whatever the hell it costs to become a voting member nowadays, or John Wilson himself, I am begging you. Make that video public. This is something the world needs to see. Please, please make it happen. And if you do, I know I have been saying a lot of bad stuff about you. I have been trashing your stupid little award show for the past few years. But if you make that video public, I promise you, I will not say one more bad thing about the Golden Raspberry Awards again for a period of at least six months. But now we come to the million dollar question. Was Freddy Got Fingered really the worst movie of 2001? Well, let's take a look at the other Worst Picture nominees. Oh wait, we don't have to, because how could any of them possibly be worse than this? This is one of the easiest calls I've ever had to make. And don't get me wrong, there were some stinkers in 2001. There was Pearl Harbor, Michael Bay's overly long and grossly historically inaccurate World War II movie. Glitter, which Mariah Carey rightfully calls the biggest regret of her career, and Corky Romano, a painfully unfunny film starring Saturday Night Live's Chris Kattan, which was somehow not nominated for a single Razzie. First Dungeons and Dragons and now this. What are the Razzie voters thinking? I really have no idea. But anyway, if for some reason you have a desire to feel unclean for about 90 minutes, I recommend giving Freddy Got Finger to watch. Otherwise, avoid at all costs. If you have a desire to watch something with Tom Green, watch literally anything else he's ever done. It's not all gold, but it's better than Freddy Got Fingered. Next time, we move ahead to the year 2002, which means I can no longer avoid the cinematic career of Madonna. Yay. Until then, I am the Smeghead, and remember kids, Feel your balls so you don't get cancer. I'm serious. Really get in there and rub your balls and squeeze them and feel them and make sure they feel like two little grapes. You don't want to feel any lumps on your balls. And if you do feel lumps on your balls, talk to your doctor right away because early detection is not Hey, wait a minute. I wasn't done. Did that sound like I was done? I'm trying to teach my young male viewers about the importance of feeling their balls. I'm doing a public service announcement here. Why are you rolling the credits? I'm trying to give them some good medical advice. Is it because I keep saying balls? Does the word balls 
bother you? Balls, 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 balls. See, it's not hurting anyone, but you know what will hurt you? Testicular cancer. You don't want that, so make sure you feel your balls. Self-examination, it's important. Oh, really? You're gonna fade me out now, you stupid mother... We can live like kings! We can live like kings!